The Middle East is in a bit of a pickle lately. Let's just say the civil wars aren't really boosting the property levels. There are many reasons to why the region is the way it is, but one major contributing factor goes back only a century to when the area was divided into the states we know today. Now, if you're confused about what I'm talking about, I discussed the entire history and debacle in this previous video. It talks about how Britain and France split the Arab region into artificial states. That's not a shameless plug. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch that or you'll be very confused. Okay. You good? Everyone caught up? So, as you know, there was an agreement between the Arab rebels and the British during World War I. If the Arabs revolted against the Turks, then they would be able to have their own unified state in the aftermath. The entire region was to be ruled by the Sharif of Mecca, Hussein bin Ali. I want to imagine an alternate timeline where this original plan is actually upheld and the Europeans don't back out of it. What if the Middle East, at least the Arab part, was truly unified? So, let's begin. If we're going by this map of the original agreement, this new state controls everything south of Turkey to the edge of the peninsula. It will be between British Egypt and Iran, and the state will simply call it the Arabian Kingdom, because I'm not very original. So yippee, the Arabian Kingdom exists. Everything is hunky-dory. Except that it isn't. Nothing ever is. Even if the Sharif is promised this land and the Arabian Kingdom internationally is recognized to control all of this land, it doesn't mean that they actually would. This is a good time to bring up that the House of Saud still exists. At the time the agreement was made, the Saud controlled a sizable chunk of the Eastern Peninsula. They wouldn't simply lose the land once the Arabian Kingdom was made. Even if their land wasn't included in the new Arab state, it's still very likely this fundamentalist and militaristic faction would compete with the larger Hashemite Kingdom. Within the first decade of this new Arab Kingdom's life, it probably fights a war against the House of Saud. Unlike our own timeline, the Sharif state is large enough and connected enough that it can easily beat back any Saud advancements. Perhaps just wipe out the Saud entirely with the help of the British. Simply by sticking with their original agreement, the Sharif has a larger state to defend himself and the friendship between his kingdom and the British continue on to stop the Saud from ever rising in the first place. So, let's move on further. World War II happens and is over. The Middle East was allied friendly for the most part, with relationships growing between Arabia and America and the colonies of Britain and France being invaded by Germany. After the war, this in our timeline was a time of decolonization. Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, and Israel were all born around the 40s, as Britain and France's empires, well, died. Yet in this alternate timeline, that doesn't happen, of course, because it's all one big unified state. But it's still going to be a time of change. The Arabs, just like everyone else, will be stuck in the new international reality that is the Cold War. In the Middle East, however, it isn't simply an ideological struggle between capitalism and communism, but between traditional elements and social change. This becomes even more prevalent when the Arab state uses modern technology to discover the vast oil supplies underneath the desert. What does that mean? Everybody wants to be allies with Arabia, or at least everybody wants to make Arabia their ally. Since this is alternate history, and it's impossible for me to predict exactly who would win to make Arabia their friend, I've decided this could go really three ways. Each is if a certain ideology influences the modern Arab state, and how exactly it could go. First, what if the West influences the Arab state? The closest comparison I could make to this is how America is allies with Saudi Arabia today. Throughout the United States and Saudi Arabia's history, they have operated on a staunch anti-communist policy. Assad would keep oil moving, and the U.S. would help them against communist revolutionaries trying to weaken the power of the monarchy. In this alternate timeline, this is the same type of relationship, except larger and more profound. To combat those communist influences, the West might support largely religious and traditional figures in the state. Movements in the Islamic world that call for secularization and anti-religious policies were usually socialist in nature, and ironically were seen as against American foreign policy. Now, for those thinking I'm attacking traditional beliefs and conservatism, let me remind you, I'm not talking about our Western version of conservatism. When I say conservative, I mean women separate from men, hijab is mandatory, 
Islamic conservatism. If America influenced Arabia, this alternate timeline in many ways is the closest to our own. They are not religiously fanatical like the House of Saud, but compared to the two other timelines, the Arab state is more conservative in nature. The good news is it wouldn't remain this conservative forever. The actual Hashemite kingdoms, like Jordan, are far more liberal societies than Saudi Arabia. Progress in the American timeline simply is over a longer period of time. But because this is over this vast stretch of time, this might be the safest alternate timeline as more traditional elements don't feel as threatened. In a timeline where the Soviets won influence instead, things would be far more dramatic and, well, more difficult. The Soviets were atheist, and that made them much more radical compared to the Christian West. Soviet history in the region is less about cooperation and more about funding movements to destabilize the monarchy. Any other funding that would lead to, say, a complete revolution, I predict would lead to a civil war within the state. I think this is the least likely, however, so I don't want to focus too much on this possibility. In this third alternate timeline, this unified Arab state is taken over by Baathist ideology. Some of you, well most of you, are probably thinking, what is Baathism? Well, the best thing I can say is that Baathism is an ideology that is a strange blend of socialism and nationalism. Baathists, at least the original proponents in the 1950s, believed that Arabs should unify and work together to make their societies just as modern as Asia and Europe. Simply put, it was meant to bring on a second Arab renaissance like the one of the medieval era. That's actually what Baath means, renaissance. Now, while this sounds hunky-dory and everything, their idea of how to do this was to simply seize power have a one-party authoritarian rule, and change the Arab world by force. Anyway, this ideology sort of devolved by the 1970s. Iraqi Baathism was eventually just hijacked by Saddam Hussein, and Syria's is actually still around today with Assad. Now, in my opinion, this could be the ideology that had the greatest chance to take hold in a unified Arab state. It'd also be one that Arabs would use to combat the influence of both the West and of communism. However, this has some ramifications. Since Baathism was about bringing the people into the modern day by force, there will be some sort of overthrow of the Sharif or King and replace him with a new secular dictator. Keep in mind, Wahhabism still would exist even if it didn't have political power, so it's likely there'd be some form of conflict and social revolt between traditionalists and secularists. If successful, it'd be a strange third ideology that could stand against capitalist and communist influences. And, if successful, is the key phrase. When first writing this video, I imagined that the Middle East might be a far more peaceful place if it was unified. Perhaps the land was richer and able to harness its oil to become wealthy like the West. But I think I was kinda wrong. There is one consistent theme throughout all of these scenarios. The fate of the Middle East would be detrimental to both sides in the Cold War. This means that even if Arabia was unified, it still might face civil wars, revolutions, and conflict. Just different kinds of conflict. There would be fights over the change in Arab society. If the House of Saud had been defeated early in the 20th century, Wahhabism doesn't have the financial influence to then spread amongst the Islamic world. Zealous Islamic militias still exist, of course, but I doubt they'd have as many numbers or as much support like today. The conflicts are far more secular. A unified Middle East story in the 20th century is one trying to find out what it is. There isn't competition between dictators of artificial states, but competition between ideologies for the fate of the nation. It might not be the peaceful world that you would imagine, however it would lead to one thing. Change. In this alternate timeline, there could be actual change in the region instead of going back like it did in this century. Whose ideas would win in the end? Well, who can say? These are simply three possibilities for what I believe could have happened. There is countless possibilities for what might have been, and this is just me theorizing. So what do you think would have happened? This is Cody of Alternate History Hub. Hey, so this is an update. 
You're probably wondering why my video schedule has been so infrequent, to say the least, for the last few months. Well, I feel it's time to say what's been going on. Alternate history is at its core about stories and fiction. It's a branch of science fiction that has been around for decades. With each alternate history video, I just scratch the surface of worlds that could be fleshed out in a full novel. And now, I'm happy to say that I'm writing an alternate history novel of my own. Yes, this is actually happening, publisher and all. I always loved the concept of the Atlantropa project. The idea to dam up the Mediterranean and change the face of Europe. I love the idea of it because it was conceived with so much optimism, but if it was actually created, it would have doomed everybody. I'll announce more details about what this book is in a future video around the summer, but I'm talking about it right now because this is why the schedule has been so infrequent. This world that you're seeing through concept art is where my time lately has went to. I'm sorry that the video schedule has suffered because of that, but I feel like this is a story that will only be good if I give 100% of my effort. At least this is how it has been for the last few months since I had to figure out plot lines and characters and all that stuff. Now I finally know where the story is going, how it is going to end, and now I can go back to the channel. I just wanted to let you know this is what my 2018 has been, and I can't wait for you guys to see more of it later this year. This is Cody of Alternate History Hub.